Hey guys, it's Darren from Champions Machine Tool Sales, the Haas factory outlet for Houston, Texas. So you finished cutting a thread and the guy in quality control tells you that the gauge point's not right. So now what do you do? Well, you've got a Haas machine, so you don't have a problem. Let's go ahead and open up the door. We'll put the part back in the chuck. Okay, so now that we've got the part back in the machine, we're gonna take a look at uh, the part itself and we're gonna talk about lining that thread up as well. Now, there's a couple of things about the Haas lathe that's different than a lot of the other lathes out there on the market. And one of the main things is on a Haas, we always start threading from the zero position of the chuck. It's better known as M19P0. It always starts threading from that location. Another little trick with the Haas machine is to always have your thread acceleration distance be divisible by the thread. So you're going to hear us talk about starting one thread, two threads, or three threads off the face of the part in relation to the lead that you're actually cutting. Well, we'll get started by closing the door. We'll go to MDI mode. And in this case, our threading tool is tool number two. So I'm gonna to go to MDI, type in T2, press the turret forward button, and we're gonna make that tool change to tool number two, which is our threading tool. I'm now gonna to go to handle jog mode. I'm gonna get my threading tool just a little bit closer to the part. And we're gonna go ahead and jog tool number two a little closer to our thread. And before I get too close, one of the things I always like to do, I like to grab the chuck by hand and I like to rotate it until I can see the first scratch or the lead in point of that thread. And I start out making that lead in thread or that lead in scratch pretty much even with the third thread back. Now you'll notice in the video, it looks like I am only going to the second thread back. That is intentional because we always call the first scratch an actual thread. Get a little closer here. And sometimes when your lighting is not very good, you can also put a piece of paper behind that thread, put a flashlight back there, anything to help you line that thread up and we're ready to go to the control. I'm gonna go to the edit mode. I'm gonna move my tab to the VPS menu. I'm gonna use the down arrow key to navigate to the VPS menu here. Enter that menu. And then of course I've got all of the different things that I can do with VPS. Down a little ways on the list is the OD thread repair cycle. Now, if you are uncertain how to use the thread recut, you can press the enter button and you can watch an intuitive video on how to perform thread repair. The machine is always gonna default to whatever tool number you've called up. It will not let you change this value. It's just showing you that you've got tool two called up and you're about to repair a thread with it. It's gonna ask us to enter a spindle RPM we're gonna start off real slow so we, we can see this easily. It's gonna ask me for the coolant. For now, for this example, I'm not gonna run coolant. So we're gonna say flood coolant nine threads per inch. This particular part is a four, a four threads per inch part. The thread height is gonna default as if that four thread per inch was an actual V thread, which is not the case here. That actual API thread is about 110 thousandths tall. Retract clearance, I'm gonna go about 100 thousandths there. And it's gonna ask me, how many threads did you just drop into that part? And again, on the part, I dropped in one, two, three threads back because I am counting that first scratch as an actual thread. Threads to clear, 
We talked about this a little earlier. I'm gonna start three threads off the face of the part. In the case of a four threads per inch, 0.250 lead, I'm gonna be starting three quarters of an inch off the face of the part, three threads off. Here is the length of my thread. The first pass depth, since I'm recutting a thread, I can get pretty aggressive on this thing sometimes. For now, we're just gonna go ahead and say about 30 thousandths, uh, about 30 thousandths to the side. Thread direction, three will give you a right-handed thread. Thread taper, this is a two inch taper per foot. So that's exactly the way I'm gonna put it in for the thread taper. The chamfer retract. If you choose 23, which is the default, the thread is gonna give you an angular pullout off of the part. If you use the 24 designation, it's gonna pull straight out of the part, which is helpful when you have thread undercuts and things like that. Retract X home when you're done. We'll go ahead and leave that on yes. Retract Z home when you're done because this is an ST35 long bed, if we go all the way back to Z home, we're gonna waste some time there. So the retract Z home is gonna remain at no. Tool change position, let's just say we wanna get Z out of the way about 10 inches when we're done. Once we finish filling in these pages and we have the threading tool sitting there ready to go, you'll notice it's still sitting in the thread groove. We're gonna go ahead and close the door. And when I press cycle start, you're gonna see what happens. The machine is actually going to retract out of the thread. It's gonna step over the three threads that we talked about, and then it's gonna actually start running in the part. Once you finish cutting the part, you've retract, the machine has retracted Z out of the way and everything. Let's say you gauge your part and you're still not quite there. Well, you don't have to go ahead and reline up the thread. You're gonna notice the line that was created in MDI when you press cycle start. It tells you modify the X and the Z above for tool offset adjustment. So if you were off a little bit in Z, you can adjust it. That's very rare. If you were still off a little bit in X and you hadn't quite lined up or you hadn't quite gotten to your right gauge point, all you have to do is put an X minus 10 thou, X minus 20 thou. You basically would continuously play with this X number until you properly gauge your part and you're happy with both the thread quality and the gauge. Speaking of thread quality, sometimes on certain parts, you might get a little chatter at certain RPMs. Also, don't worry about that on the Haas machine because we are allowed to go ahead and change the spindle speed if we want to, and we can recut that thread. So when we change the RPM, it is not gonna change the thread lead reference. Now that we've recut a single part and we're happy with that one, what if you had hundreds of these guys to cut? Well, your process is gonna be a little bit different and actually easier in a lot of cases. So what we're gonna do here from the MDI mode, I'm gonna press the erase program button and I'm gonna clear the MDI contents. Now I'm gonna tell the machine to call up tool number two, offset number two, T202, end of block. My next line is gonna command the M19 command which is simply telling my machine to orient the spindle. Now I'm gonna back this camera up just a little bit. We'll go ahead and close the door. And we're cycle start this command. So we're calling up tool two, we're orienting the spindle. My spindle is now sitting at the orient position. I'll take the tool, I'll line it up in that second thread back once again but this time I'm not gonna run the thread recut program. This time I'm gonna go to the offsets page and get a little work done there. Okay, so in the offsets page, I'm gonna go to my offsets. I am gonna press the F4 button to toggle to work offsets. 
I'm going to go to my G54Z reference, for instance, and I'm going to press the Z face measure button. Now what I've just done is I've taken a tool of a known reference, tool two offset two. I've oriented the spindle and now I'm teaching the Z reference in G54. Once I do that, I can go back to my program itself, go straight down to tool number two, and I can actually just run the threading cycle. So remember what I just did is I dropped my tool into the second lead back and I called that G54 Z zero. That would be the intention of actually doing in the oil field industry what we call a pushback, meaning that we would face the part off shorter, we would push back the shoulder, and then we would re-thread the thread, making sure that we got 100% cleanup all the way around. If you do not need to face off or push back the shoulder, after you teach that thread, you will have to bring it two threads to the right in the case of a quarter inch lead we would have to bring it to the right by a half inch and actually teach that as our Z0. There's multiple ways we can do that. You can do it automated in a G10 sequence, or you can just simply set the tool and then shift it half inch to the right. I hope this answered your questions about both methods of repairing a thread. A simple way to repair a single thread or a single part, and a simple way to cut hundreds of parts if you have a pipe rack and a line of threads to recut. Thank you for watching.